Yes, yes, welcome, welcome. Hey, hey, y'all. It's your girl, the Erica Sharon. Welcome to I Am God's Girl, the channel where we talk about God, we love on God, and we talk about God some more. I want to give a special thanks to my new subscribers. And thank you all to those of you who are just now tuning in for the first time. Welcome. I'm not going to hold you all too long. I had a dream uh, and the Lord wants me to share it with you all. So I'm going to hop right into it. All right, so I'm going to be looking down at my notes because I don't want to forget anything uh, that the Lord had me write down. I had this dream a couple of months ago. So initially, when I uh, received the dream, I, you know, when I woke up, I didn't really remember too much of it. Um, but a couple of days ago, God brought it back to my memory, and He just instantly started to download uh, things, you know, about the dream. And He was like, "Okay, you know." Typically when he does that, I'm just like, okay, then he wants me to share it. In the beginning of the dream, it's me and my children in this huge mall. It was gorgeous, by the way. Um, and there were so many levels. Um, there were so many stores. There were all these restaurants. And surprisingly, there were a lot of bookstores. You can hear chattering going on. People are laughing. You, you know, you can smell the food from the restaurants. People are eating and uh, just carrying on shopping and having a really good time. Uh, you can even hear the kids playing and you see them, you know, at the little play areas and stuff. Like it's just, you know, how it would normally be uh, at a shopping mall. Now, on this particular day, it was packed. I mean, there were like a lot of people there, okay? Just hundreds and hundreds of people there. Um, me and my children are strolling along and I didn't hear any music. So I couldn't hear any music. There wasn't any music playing um, in the stores when you walked in. There weren't any, there weren't, wasn't any music playing as you were walking in the actual mall itself. There wasn't music outside. Like there was just no music. And it was just so strange. And so as we're walking, when we would pass some of the stores, um, some would just shut down, like people would close them. And it was early, like, why are you shutting the, the, the store down? Okay. So they would shut the store down. Um, some stores, as we walked past them, would like, blank out. Okay. Like the lights would go out in them. Some stores had lights flickering in them, going and off. And then some stores were just, you know, they just weren't open at all, period. Because the stores were closing down on the level that we were on, we decided to go to a different level. There are three different ways that we, you know, could have taken to get to the next level. We could have taken the stairs, uh, but for me, it felt like they were a little hazardous and like everybody was on the stairs. Remember I said there was just a lot of people there. So I was just like, no, let's not do that. And so then we proceeded to the elevator um, and I got on the elevator, me and the kids, and there was no music playing in the elevator. And so I was like, okay, you know what? Y'all, first of all, don't have music playing in the stores. There's no music playing anywhere else in the mall. Now y'all don't have no uh, music on the elevator? What's up with that? You know, and it kind of freaked me out, honestly. Because I was like, okay, this is just too weird. It's just, this is just too much for me. It's not normal. So I'm like, all right, kids, come on, let's let's get up off this elevator. So we get off the elevator and we proceed to the escalator. OK, we get on the escalator and I look up and the lights in the mall start flickering. They're just flickering and then they start getting real fast. Right. Like it's like signaling something. And so I'm, I'm looking around to see if anybody else sees it. I'm just like, anybody else see the light flickering on and off? And nobody is really paying attention nobody sees it i guess i don't know but it, nobody really acknowledges that the lights are flickering on and off and then all of a sudden the escalator stops and the electricity goes out then it gets silent all right um and so it's silent for a while okay it's silent for a while it was kind of eerie you know I was I was expecting something something to happen. I was like, it's too quiet. And sure enough, here we go. Somebody, you just hear like this loud scream. Somebody just belts out. 
far off into the distance somewhere. And then all of a sudden, it's just, you know, all she wrote. People are in a frenzy. People are running in a frenzy. It's just chaotic, okay? People are running down the stairs. You see people, like, running up and down the escalators. Um, people are trying, like, and people are, like, push, trying to push past me, you know, getting up the escalator, getting down the escalator. And I'm just like, okay. Um, and you can hear, like, glass, like, shattering because you know, you can't get, people can't get out the, the mall at all. They're trying to get out and they can't get out. And so glass is shattering and you just hear just people are like being so violent. People are fighting. You hear people screaming. It is just complete pandemonium. That's the word I hear, pandemonium. And so after I hear that word, um, I hear like this loud screaming and banging, toot, toot, toot. And this lady screaming, like, at the top of her lungs, like, please, my baby, my baby, my baby. She just kept screaming that and kept banging um, in the elevator. And so, you know, she couldn't get out of the elevator. She was stuck. She was trapped in the elevator with her and her child. While all of this is going on, everybody's running frantic and stuff. Me and the kids are chilling, right? We're just chilling. We don't move. I, I don't feel afraid or anything like that. They're not afraid. They're just kind of like looking up at me like, why is everybody, you know, tripping right now? And then I'm just really calm. We're just waiting. We aren't moving. We haven't, you know, we just don't budge. We just stand there. We're like, we're standing here. We, you know, we ain't going to move until we feel it's safe to do so or, or what have you. So as I'm standing there, this person comes up to me and they're asking me like what do we do what do we do and wh why aren't you aren't you afraid why aren't you afraid like what do we do please help 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 please help me help me and yeah i don't want to laugh because it's not funny but it was funny to me because i'm like looking at the person like you know what why okay first of all back back okay back up and what, what are you asking me you know why are you asking me for help what you asking me for help for and then i was like oh, what happened to the backup generator isn't there a backup generator you know and then the piece of person is just like please 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 and they get down on their knees and like please help can't you help you must know something because you're not afraid and you're not you know fearful like everybody. please help and i was just like I, look I, I don't know what to tell you okay i mean you can follow suit and just chill with me, but I, I ain't got the answer right now, you know? And um, and so the person just leaves, okay? They get up and they leave. Um, they just kind of scurry off. And so me and the kids are still on the escalator. I don't move at all. And then I remember, I'm like, oh, I got a flashlight. And so I reach in my bag and... Um, there's a, a tiny flashlight that I pull out. It's really tiny. Nonetheless, it's a flashlight. Okay. So I pull that out and I point it down. I shine the light down at my feet. And then all of a sudden these arrows pop up. Like I see this arrow pops up and it's kind of like blinking, like, doo, doo, you know, and pointing. It's an arrow. So it's pointing in a certain direction. So I'm like, uh oh, okay. Come on, kids, let's let's follow the arrow. Let's follow the arrow. And so we're following the arrows. You know, I'm just walking along, shining the light at my feet. And the path is just, my path is just being directed by these arrows. Okay, so we're just following these arrows. Now, meanwhile, everything's still, everybody's still running frantic. Everybody's still screaming, fighting, and throwing stuff, trying to break out of the mall, all of that. Okay. And it's still dark, all right? And but I'm I'm following these arrows, but nobody is following me. And I'm like, okay, y'all see I got I got a light and and got, nobody sees these arrows lighting up. Like, come on, what y'all doing? You know? So I, I just kept on moving, me and my kids. Finally, um, we're led to this door, and it's just like this huge, massive door. And there's an arrow pointing for me to like shine on this spot at the door. So I shine the light on the door and it opens up. And so I'm like, oh snap, I'm looking around again. 
checking to see if anybody followed me. But nobody was behind me. Nobody was standing. Like, nobody followed me. So I'm like, wow, I, I've been led to this secret place. I done discovered this secret place, you know, for me and my kids. Cool. I thought it was just me. But as it opens, I look in and I see that there's just people in there chilling. Okay? There's people in there chilling. There's some you can see are sitting at a table. They're eating, talking amongst one another. Um, it was, you know, quiet. It wasn't like loud, boisterous or anything like that. It was just people just, you know, enjoying their meal and conversing with one another. And then you saw some people sitting at like this little like campfire, roasting marshmallows. You saw kids running around playing um, games and stuff like that. And so it was just like, oh, okay, cool. I ain't the only one. Cool. Let's, let's, let's slide up on, on, up on in here and see what's going on, you know? And so we, you know, we step in and the door shuts behind us. As I'm walking in, you know, and I'm seeing all these people, I look over and I hear, you know, I see this band over there and I'm hearing them, I'm hearing the music. They're playing live music. And there's people over there, you know, kind of like, it's kind of like a, a mini concert going on. And the song is playing is one of my, like, I love this song. It's like my favorite song right now. It's called um, God So Love, and it's by We the Kingdom. And um, there's a version that they have with Tasha Cobbs that I absolutely love. I play that song out. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. I love that song. I don't do it any justice. Y'all should check it out. I'm going to link it down below. I love it. Um, but that song was playing. And so people are just, you know, kind of like grooving to the song and stuff. And I'm like standing there grooving like, oh, yeah. And me and my kids, my kids are grooving because they like that song too. But as I'm, you know, watching, I see someone kind of stand up in the crowd. And he turns around. It's a guy. He turns around. And he kind of like, he does this. He kind of motions towards something. He's pointing at something. And I'm looking like, what? And he's like, and so he points. And I look over and there's like this section with like all these tents. Okay. All these tents around set up. And they were nice tents too. You know, you know, those tents that have like different, you know, little rooms in them and stuff. It was like big tents like that set up. And so he's pointing, pointing, and I'm like, I'm looking, and then I look back at him, and he's like, if, girl, if you don't look over there where I'm pointing at, you know, kind of like that. And so I look again, and I see that there's a tent with my name on it, okay? And so I'm like, oh, awesome, cool. So I take me and my kids to the tent. We walk into the tent, and there's this, um, there's like this, this, shelf i guess you could say and it's stacked with food it's stacked with juice water um all types of stuff it had the the main thing i noticed was it was food that my kids love okay so like pizza macaroni and cheese chicken nuggets um my kids love spaghettios Ugh, they love those um so it was stacked with stuff like that and then i um recognized i saw that there was this um it stood out the most to me was there this like um little gas stove top little portable gas top stove and then um i saw candles and 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 batteries and uh, matches and flashlights and so all this stuff was stocked up for me in my tent um, and then there were clothes off to the other side and so i was like oh this is awesome cool i sit down i just smell like this this aroma and it's like a cinnamon smell. It was really sweet. And um, it was just so fragrant. It was just a beautiful, like a, a really nice smell. Very enjoyable. And so I sat down and I was like, okay, well, I guess we we gonna chill for a while. We're gonna be here for a while. Let's go ahead and um, you know, eat up and chill and enjoy the music and enjoy, get to know everybody that's here and enjoy ourselves. I go to reach for some pizza to cook on the little stovetop and there's this um, like a welcome note. And so I open the welcome note and it says your preparation for the new. And I was like, okay, 
cool. And then I woke up. Okay, so that was it. That was the dream. Let me just share with you what the Lord um, had me write down. We will see some very hard times that will cause complete and other pandemonium in the earth. Remember who I am. Use the word and follow my instructions. That's what he wrote. That says the Lord. And so the interpretation. So I'm just going to list down just as he gave it to me um, what everything meant. Okay. So the mall. Um, the mall represents the world, worldly ways, worldly pleasures and desires, um, pleasurable things. It, it, typically, when you think of a mall, you think of a place where you go for, you know, at your leisure, um, for entertainment, a place that you may go to eat, um, and definitely a place where you go and shop for clothing and, you know, things like that. Um, but it's not necessarily a place you would go if you um, like really needed something versus um, it being a place that you go where you shop for things that you want. Okay. So he made that distinction there that this is more so about your want, your wants. Okay. Versus, you know, the needs. Now make note that shopping malls, are like an old thing now. They're kind of closing down. A lot of them are just, it's just kind of fading out that that way of, um, of shopping. And so um, he's saying that this is like the world fading away. Uh, I was led to the scripture, 1 John 2, 17. The world will soon fade away along with its desires. Okay. Um. Now, the bookstores were just worldly knowledge, okay? So those things that are just, you know, information from people in the world, um, philosophy, your um, things like that, okay? Y'all know what I mean. Like, there's just crazy amounts of bookstores there. So it just meant worldly knowledge, okay? Versus, you know, the Bible and, and spiritual knowledge, okay? So the fact that there was no music was, and it was very, you know, weird to me. Um, it, 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 it wasn't pleasurable for me. Right. Like I just, and typically when music is playing, music is used to enhance the customer's experience, to enhance their shopping experience. Right. Um, to enhance their dining experience. Um, even if you're at like a doctor's office or something, you know, it just, it's something that kind of like calms you down and keeps, you know, it enhances your experience there at that place. And so this was like indicative of my, um, me not this, you know, just not having any pleasure in the world anymore. Right. I'm, I'm in the world. I'm kind of strolling through it, but I, I don't get pleasure out of being in the world and doing the worldly things anymore. So that's what the no music meant. And for some of you, that's what it may mean too. Like you, you may not, you know, you may, you're not getting pleasure out of worldly things because you're a child of God. Okay. In the world, not of it. Um, all right. And so the vacant stores that were like, they had flickering lights and some of them were closing as we were walking. That was just an indication of the pending pandemonium that was about to take place. That's all that was. And people weren't really paying attention to that. Okay. So I'm, I was looking around like, okay, ain't nobody seeing this. Nobody was seeing it. Apparently. Um, it is also, the Lord was sharing with me that it is also how, um, it's also warning. Okay. But people are, are taking it as, um, it's like they're being conditioned to accept things that, um, as normal that should not be normal okay like you know you're watching the news and you see that um someone you know you hear that someone's getting shot and killed every day okay pretty soon you're conditioned to hear that and it just becomes normal right um let's say like uh for instance you you know how there's sometimes there's now there's no um 
there's a shortage in, in certain items at grocery stores, okay? Um, little by little, this is happening in different places, okay? Conditioning you to think that it's normal when it, this is not normal, okay? Um, banks are closing, okay? There's bank runs that have been happening um, in different countries, some parts of the U.S., okay? It's not normal, right? But people are kind of, you know, blowing it off as, uh, whatever, okay? This, this is just, this is a part of life now. Not true, okay? In the choosing of the escalators, now this, hear this out, this, is, this was really neat how the Lord um, revealed this to me. The choosing of the escalator. Um, escalators are straight. They're narrow. You know, when you get on them, there's not much room for you to move around and you pretty much need to stay on that step, you know, for the ultimate safety. Um, and, you know, you don't have to walk up or down it um, unless it stops, but you don't have to walk up or down a, an escalator. You can just, you just ride it up or you ride it down. Right. And so what came to me was Matthew 7, 13 through 14, Matthew 7, 13 through 14. And it reads, enter at the straight gate for broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be which go in there at because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life. Few there be that find it. And so that was just amazing to me. I was like, God, you, you are awesome. Um, so me choosing the escalator versus going down the stairs or going um, on the, the elevator was me choosing the straight and narrow path. Okay. Now the escalator, um, as I said, it's, it's, it may be slow, but it's steady and it's safe and you don't have to do much work. Okay. You just, just ride it out. Um, whereas with an elevator, um, it is quick, it is convenient. All right. But if things like a, a blackout happen, you, you, you stuck, like you're trapped on that thing. Okay. So that's not safe at all. And you have to wait until the lights come back on or until somebody comes and gets you out. Okay. So the fact that there was no music playing. It, you know, it was kind of like a warning to me. It was kind of like a nudging in my spirit, like uh -uh, something ain't right. And so you all, you know, when you get that nudging in your spirit, it, that something's not right, you should definitely take heed and listen to that and, and follow to follow the direction and the guidance of the spirit because, you know, uh, it could be keeping you safe. Okay. Keeping you from harm. Um, now the stairs, like I, I told you all, I felt like they were just hazardous, that that just was not the way to go, especially with me and my kids. Um, you know, you could trip and fall up or down the steps and there were just a lot of people like crowding the steps. So, you know, there you go again, the, the wide gate, the wide path to destruction. So I thought that was really neat how he revealed that to me. Um, always take heed to the Holy Spirit's nudging. I already said that. If something seems off, it usually is. So make sure you pay attention. Always take heed to the Holy Spirit's nudging. Um, so now me looking up on the escalator and seeing the flickering lights, was, and they were flickering like really fast, basically was warning, okay? And it was that there's something about to, something's about to go down. Pandemonium. Um, and again, no one notices. No one's paying attention. Um, and then, so then the electricity goes out. I mean, it's, yeah, all you hear is a zoom, and the electricity goes out, the escalator stops, and then the chatter fades out silent, silently, you know, it, then there's silence, excuse me. Um, and then pandemonium, okay? It, it, it's just all she wrote, chaotic, just a mess. Everybody's frantic. People are being violent. It's just, it's just a hot mess. Your glass shattering chaos. Okay. Now I looked up the word pandemonium. Pandemonium means all demon place. Okay. I'm just like, oh, wow. Um, 
So it's like where demons dwell, where they do their thing. They break out, okay? It is also the capital of hell in a poem by John Milton. And the poem is called Paradise Lost. I was just like, whoa. Okay. Then, um, if you look at pandemonium, the, the middle of the word is demon. Demon's in the middle of it. And so that's exactly what it seemed like. Just demonic, okay? Violence, chaotic. There was fear, terror, fighting, okay? Screaming. It was just all bad. It's just all bad. Now, remember I said um, when I was on the escalator, I heard a woman, woman screaming and pounding like, you know, let me out, please, my baby. My baby's here. I have a baby. Let me out. Okay. That automatically made me think of the scripture. Um, it's in Luke 21, verse 23. And I'll just read it. It says, woe to them that are with child. And to them, they give suck in those days. So those who have child and those, those who are like pregnant, those who um, are breastfeeding. Okay. Um, For there shall be great distress upon the land and wrath unto this people. And so that's what it reminded me of. Just whew, um, the woman screaming. The next thing was me and the kids. We were staying put. We were calm. We were chilling. We didn't move. But what the Lord revealed to me was that, okay, you know, th this is obviously something that I can't control. Okay. It's, it's like a fight that I, I can't, you know, I can't intervene in. I can't fix it. There's nothing I can change about it. And so what um, came to me was the, um, the scripture where Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, where they had just exited out of Egypt and, um, you know, the, the, uh, Pharaoh and all of his army is pursuing them. They're right on their heels and they're right at the Red Sea and they're so fearful. They don't know. They're like, Oh my gosh, you know, we should have just, should have just left us back in Egypt. We were fine there. You should have just left us to be slaves. Okay. Who want to stay as a slave? Come on now. Okay. That's, Mindset, y'all, just mindset, all off. But Moses says, stand still, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And watch what he's going to do for you today, right now, in this instant. And he says to them that the Lord says that this situation that you see will be no more, okay? And so that's what it reminded me of, us just standing there, okay? We were standing still and we were waiting on something to happen. Okay. I wasn't moving until something happened. There's one translation that says to, um, is to be firm, confident, undismayed. Okay. I just really like that where it says be firm, confident, undismayed. So be firm, stand firm, stay confident in your God and don't be dismayed. Um, so some of you, and this speaks to personal situations, you know, some of you may be going through certain situations where you just, you don't know up from down. You don't know if you're coming or going left from right. It just seems chaotic. Okay. God is saying, stand still. Okay. When all, when you've done all you could do, just stand, stand still and see his salvation. Watch him work for you. Okay. So now the person approaching me and seeking help. Um, and, and asking me for help, you know, and then me saying to them, well, like, where's your backup generator? What, what happened to that? Um, it, I, it wasn't funny, but it was funny to me, you know, um, be, because of the way that I kind of, I kind of came off like kind of mocking the person like, okay, you, you don't have, you don't, what happened to the generator? Don't y'all usually go just cut the generator, the backup generator on? Why aren't you doing it now? You know, that's how I was coming at the person. And so the Lord led me to Isaiah 2, 8 through 9. And it reads, their land is full of idols. They worship the works of their hands, that which their own fingers have made. Okay. And so that is, that is like me talking about the backup generator. Okay. Like where is your generator now? Okay. 
<laughs> and in verse nine says, so now they will be humbled and all will be brought low. Do not forgive them. And so that's pretty much the attitude I had. Like, dude, come on, man. You know, really? What's up? What what happened to your, you know, your generator? What's up with your generator? The things that y'all rely on aside, you know, besides relying on God, the things that you put your trust in, what happened to your backup plan? Okay. So God is saying like, you know, y'all have idols. You have, you worship the things that you have made with your own hand. You forget that I'm, I'm God. I am God. Sorry. Someone's messaging me. You forget that I'm God and what I say goes pretty much. Okay. And so that's what the generator represented like idols, um, in that, in that scripture. Um, and then the person was humbled. They were, they, they went down to my, to their knees and they were begging me for help. And I was just like, well, back, 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 back up. Okay. Like go on somewhere. That's basically the attitude I had. And so, um, do not forgive them. Okay. The Lord is like, I, I can't, this isn't something I can, I for, I'm going to forgive. Okay. Um, so God is basically saying, trust in God, trust in him, not in man. And also he's saying to, um, tell, tell you, ask him to reveal any idols that you may have in your life. Okay. Anything that you have placed before God, anything that you are putting your trust in, um, instead of God, ask and pray for revelation of what those things are. Okay. Amen. All right. We're getting through it. Y'all bear with me. Thank you. If you're here still, God bless you. All right. So the tiny flashlight, this was something personal to me because, um, the flashlight was tiny, right? There's this Bible that I have in my car. That's really tiny. Okay. It's not like pocket, pocket, pocket size, like the type you get at the um, dollar stores, but it's a tiny Bible. Okay. Full Bible, but it's just miniature size and so that's what the flashlight represented my tiny bible for me but the flashlight in general um is a light and so that um reminded me of psalm 119 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and now remember that's exactly what it was i was flashing the light down at my feet and then the arrows started to light up and they were directing me um, to where I needed to go, right? And so that's God's word. Um, and so the arrows pointed me uh, to this secluded, it took me to the secluded area in the mall um, where, and nobody followed me. And so that was kind of strange to me, like nobody sees me walking with this light, what's up? And the Lord was just saying, well, because this is your personal path with me. This is your personal walk with me. I'm leading you. I'm directing you. I'm guiding you. This is you. Okay. Nobody else is walking on this with you. Okay. And that's for you too. It's your own journey, your personal walk with God. Okay. So now the secret and secluded hiding place where everybody else was at, they were chilling, um, they had, you know, they had like this nice ambiance going, candles were lit. Some people were, have, you know, playing games and the children were running around, all of that. Um, that represents God's divine providence, okay? His, his place where there's peace. It's a place where he's protecting you. It's his place of provision and a place of preparation, okay? So remember the, the um, note that I got said preparing for the new now there's more revelation on that but that's what it was that's what it is that secret hiding place um and there were other believers there with me and so it was commute the community it was a place where the body of christ you know other members of the body resided um and then there was this uh remember i said there was this sweet uh cinnamon fragrance that i smelled when i was there and um I found out that cinnamon was used in the holy oil uh, back in the days um, where ancient Hebrews would use that. Uh, and they used that for consecration, for performing the sanctification of things. 
Um, so that's what was commonly used. And it was, it was scented with myrrh and cinnamon. And so that's what I was smelling. It was like just this sweet smelling fragrance. It was like the um, uh, holy oil, okay? Uh, so this was a place that was secluded and set apart. It was sanctified for the people of God, okay? Now the band, this is like one of my favorite parts. The band with the live music and the song that I absolutely love, okay? Y'all go check that out. I'm gonna link it down below, was um, a live concert. It was worship going on, okay? That's what it was. It was live worship experience okay people were just praising god now god made the distinction he used this to make the distinction between real versus counterfeit okay and so what he was saying was look this is a real experience of joy of pleasure okay this is what it really is supposed to feel like this is what it feels like this is live music versus the music that you hear in in the malls that's coming through the speakers okay and was probably recorded in the studios it's not the live version right and so god was making that distinction like this is real this is the the real experience that you'll have with me and that's the experience that you have when you're in the world okay it's not real it's 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 counterfeit okay it's studio vibes okay i just thought that was awesome how he made that distinction it's a lot more pleasurable and more joyful for me um experiencing live music as opposed to you know hearing it on the radio through the speakers i love live music i just absolutely love it it's like take me to a live concert you know uh, take me to a place where they're playing live music and i'm happy all right um, now, he also wanted me to note that malls um, are places where you spend your money. So it's a place where stuff is taken from you in order to get something, right? You have to spend in order to get. But he said, his place, uh, God's providence, is a place where I give. And it's a place of provision. So I'm providing for you. I'm giving to you. You don't have to give me anything, right? But you. Now, the man in the crowd pointing to me and, and telling me where to go. Come on, y'all. Y'all know who that is. That's Jesus, right? Y'all know that was Jesus. So that's Jesus. And we know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He points us to the Father. He is that dude. Um, that's who we follow. He's our example. Um, and we are just so grateful and thankful for the work that he has done on the cross. And... Jesus is just that dude, okay? We just love Jesus, okay? Love you, Jesus. So that's who that was, the man that was pointing me to my tent, okay? Now, the tent, um, that was my own personal tent. It had all of my needs in it and everything that me and my children needed, right? Everything was there. We wanted for nothing. Um, now, also, the tents, tents are um, typically temporary setups for for living okay so uh, that was indicative of the fact that this was a temporary situation okay that we weren't going to be there forever but this is what it is for now so just camp out here chill you got everything you need wait for the next move okay um there was a note okay it was like a welcome note and it said preparation for the new and, um, okay, I said it was a temporary place. Basically, we, we were, it was a place where we were being prepared for what is to come next, okay? All the new things that are to come. Um, new kingdom, okay? I was led to Revelations 21.5, where God says, Behold, I am making everything new. Everything new. New, 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 everything new, new. New, 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 everything new. Hey, hey, hey. You know that song? That's by Ty Trivet. That's another one of my favorite songs right now. And so that's where I woke up. That's where it ended. And so, listen. My brothers and sisters, we are about to enter into perilous times, okay? Um, 
this is serious now, okay? We're entering into perilous time and the Lord is telling us not to fear, not to be afraid, but he wants us to prepare, okay? He wants us to prepare. Um, he says, be wise, pray, and ask for God's direction on how to best prepare for you and your household. So we want to be prepared, okay? We Listen, if, if a prolonged blackout happens, which I'm sure something like that is going to happen since the dream was a blackout. If that happens, if that occurred, are you prepared? Okay. Do you have gener backup generators? <laughs> Do you have a backup generator? Do you have, um, you know, flashlights, batteries? Do you have um, candles? You know, you know, when electricity, electricity goes out, you know what's up, right? Are you prepared? If uh, if there's a prolonged food shortage, which there will be coming soon, okay? Famine is coming. Are you prepared? Have you stocked up on things that you and your family love to eat, okay? And as you all saw um, in the tent, the th first things that I saw was food that was stocked up, different hygiene products and things like that. Um, oh, and there was also that the um, the gas, little gas burner stove, okay? If you have no electric you can't cook okay um if someone try to roll up on you and act crazy are you prepared okay i i'm getting myself prepared just in case okay we want to be safe not sorry i just went and got my um my gun permit so that i can go purchase a pistol i can go purchase a rifle i can purchase guns okay and i'm going to be taking um, classes and going to the shooting range and learning how to use a gun. Okay. Again, not saying that this is for everybody and I'm not saying, you know, this to instill fear. I'm saying this for preparation, pray, ask the Lord for guidance and direction and instruction on how to best prepare for you and your household. Okay. That's what he has instructed me to do. So I'm going to do what he tells me to do. Okay. All right. Um, so let's be, let's be safe. Let's not be sorry. Let's pray. Let's ask for guidance and let's be prepared. Okay. And then also understand that this is temporary. It's not going to be forever. Okay. It's just temporary. God is with us. God is going to take care of his own. There is nothing to fear. Hallelujah. There's nothing to fear. God is awesome. He is on our side. Listen, family, I love you. God bless you all. Um, until we meet again, keep the faith. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and um, I'll see you guys again. All right. I love you. Good night.